I do want to talk about the jobs thing. There is this lofty promise that AI data centers are going to create thousands and thousands of jobs. Meantime, AI is destroying jobs elsewhere. Yeah. And I feel like even there is serious anxiety out there. People are scared. Totally. E even among the best engineers and technologists, people are scared. What do you say to those people? AI is for sure going to change a lot of jobs, totally take some jobs away, create a bunch of new ones. Mm -hmm. This is what happens with technology. And in fact, if, I think if you look at the history of the world, technological driven job change or whatever you call it, when one class of jobs go away and another one pop up, that's very consistent. It happens at a, it's punctuated, but like, that's just been happening for a long time. And the thing that is different this time is just the rate with which it looks like it will happen. The thing I think the world is not ready for, people have maybe abstractly thought it's gonna be a better programmer than me, it's gonna be better at customer support and whatever. I don't think the world has really had the humanoid robots Hmm. moment yet. And I don't think that's very far away from like visceral, oh man, this is going to do a lot of things that people used to do. So it's coming and we have always tried to just be super honest about what we think the impact may be, realizing that we'll be wrong on a lot of details. What happens when the humanoid robots get here? <laughs> um, I mean, they'll obviously do a lot of jobs, but what point I was trying to make is I think the first day you're walking down the street and there's like seven robots that walk past you doing things or whatever, it's gonna feel very sci-fi. DeepSeek appears to have found a more efficient way to power AI. Was that a moment of rethink for you? And are you doing anything differently now? I think the DeepSeek team is very talented and did a lot of good things. I don't think they figured out something like way more efficient than what we figured out. But do you think there is a more efficient way to power oh, I'm AI? Sure. I'm sure. We will, we have made incredible efficiency strides year over year, and I'm sure we'll keep doing that in the future. So if that's the case, why are you building all this? If we had an AI that we could offer at one-tenth of the price of current AI, I think people would use it 20 times as much, and we would still need twice as much compute to satisfy the then-current demand. So let's talk about that. Jevons paradox. Like, how do you think Jevons paradox applies here? That technological progress means, paradoxically, you're going to be using more resources. Doesn't, this never seemed like a paradox to me at all. For context, Jevons Paradox describes a phenomenon where improvements in resource efficiency lead to an overall increase in resource consumption, contrary to the expectation that efficiency would reduce usage. One great example is the cost to produce electricity coming down over time, yet cost to purchase electricity has been slowly rising due to increased demand. We talk about supply-demand curves and elasticity and all sorts of other things, and then people are like, oh, I'm going to trick you with Jevons Paradox, and it's like, this is just the way the world works most of the time. But you do think there will be more efficient ways. What are those sure. ways? Is it better chips? Is it... Is all of the above. We will have better chips. We will have better energy sources. We'll have better algorithms. We will optimize it. This is what industry does. We'll optimize everything. What do you guys think of Sam Altman's opinion here? Drop a comment below. Then click here to watch what Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk think about how humans will find meaning and purpose in a world of AGI.